So, something very simple. Mm-hmm. Somebody starting out, most likely they're going to ask you, so what's a good chemical to clean carpet? What's a, a good shampoo, good <laughs> detergent? Because, you know, they always ask yeah. in the general, you know, what's the best that you have? Exactly. G- give, give us some, some rundowns of what detergents so, you have. Yes, best is kind of relative, right? Mm-hmm. It depends on what you're doing, what you're using. Um, as a professional, you don't want to be using something that you purchased from uh, a retail store like mm-hmm. Walmart or something, you know, or, or any of the stores um, because it's not really made for that or if it's not, if it is even made, it's not concentrated enough. So you're really not getting that much bang for your buck. Like, for example, someone was asking me the other day about the cost of uh, the trash green gel. And interestingly enough, this container, which is only a 32 ounce container, makes 64 gallons ready to use, right? Right. So it costs $40 or something, but when you convert that uh, 64 gallons, and the cost of it is like 25 cents a gallon. So it's gonna cost you 25 cents a gallon to get to make something that works. Yeah. Um, now, also you asked me about generally, you know, are the chemicals different? In a lot of the ways, the chemicals are very similar because number one, you need the same thing. Like to break dirt, it's like soap. When you take a shower, you put soap on your body, which separates the dirt from your body, so you're clean. So that's called surfactant. So they're all going to have major ingredient surfactant. You know, okay. a good example is Dawn dish soap or something that we're familiar with. And then the other ingredients that um, people find um, similar in carpet cleaning as well as pressure washing is um, oil-based spots and stains. Okay. Right? Like uh, for, for window washers and, and pressure washers, it may be diesel fuel. For people indoors, it could be just tracked on asphalt. It could be gong things like that. So it's important that the chemical already has um, some solvent or something that can remove your oil-based spot and stain. Right, right. And then the other thing that we find in our in our chemicals that will help us clean would be uh, oxygen which is hydrogen peroxide and basically uh, the spots and stains uh, like coffee, urine, anything that's natural, all it's, do, all it's um, lacking is a molecule of oxygen. So when you give it that molecule of oxygen, it just it disappears. It and that's probably what most people, Magic Wand customers are accustomed to, is when they pre-spray something, it has an organic stain on it. You can't even find it after the pre-spray, even before you start, start cleaning. cleaning. Okay, well, that one you pointed to is a trash green gel. Yes. I did some homework, right, before <laughs> our little interview here so what's the difference between the trash green gel and Uh the gallon form the liquid versus the gel what's the main difference? there's absolutely no difference just because of technology we were the first ones to invent uh, trashed green uh, which has uh, hydrogen peroxide in it before that people didn't even know how to put uh, oxygen inside a container because it gets yeah exactly Um, so uh, we, we made the trash green it's got a vented lid on it um, but as time went by, uh, we were able to perfect that and remove even more water that we weren't able to remove. Okay. So now what it, what it did was shrunk down the size of the bottle. So instead of a gallon, it's basically a quart. Okay. But with the quart, it's making the same amount as that whole gallon would make. But some of the advantages would be like the shipping cost is a lot less for us. Plus, you know, our handling costs and all that going from store to store. And the customer carrying it around, not carrying any water. The water is free. Right. You can get water from a tap. So basically, the advantage of it is that it's really concentrated and it'll save them money. Okay. Can the trash green be mm-hmm. used as a rinse? A <laughs> good question. Uh, yes, it can. And in fact, the directions are on there. Okay. So it tells you as a detergent how much to use. And the unique thing about the green is it comes with a pump, so you you can actually measure it with the pump, so you don't have to pour it out. Um, so, for example, for a 10-gallon tank, you need half an ounce. Wow. Yeah. So that is about, uh, I think a pump is eighth of an ounce, so that would be four pumps. So you just pump it four times, and you're ready um, to use a whole 10 gallons as a detergent. Um, detergent, sometimes they're also called a rinse, same thing, basically. Okay. So it can be used as a pre-spray or a detergent. 
Okay. And then, as far as like towel and grout cleaning goes, mm -hmm. what's a chemical that you recommend for towel and grout? Well, towel and grout cleaning is pretty <coughs> interesting. It's a lot different because we're dealing with uh, grout. The tile itself isn't really hard to clean, right? You right. can clean it any, any which way. But when you have the grout, grout is absorbent. It's going to absorb everything. Plus, it lays below the tile. So in the groove underneath, dirt, water, all kinds of stains collect. But they're not just sitting there. They actually get absorbed into the grout. So it's really challenging to clean the grout. And in order to remove the blotchiness, the dirt from the grout itself, you need to have the chemical do the same thing that the dirt did, which is to get absorbed into the grout. So when you put it in the on the grout and it gets absorbed in it, it needs a little bit of dwell time so it can go in there and create, do its magic. And pull and it back. Remove, yeah, remove some of the spots and stains that are absorbed into it. Okay. Uh, chemical wise, I'd say Oxyblaster by far the best seller that we have, the most copied product as well. Okay. Um, the trash high pH is great for when you have buildup because when you have buildup on the tile and grout, you're really not cleaning the grout. You're cleaning the buildup because the buildup um, is gonna not allow the oxyblaster to get absorbed into the grout line to to do its Put job. It yeah, and yeah. It. So if, if it's got buildup on it, you know, in like a greasy restaurant or something like that, you want to make sure you put the trashed high pH on there, get rid of that buildup, so you can concentrate on the grout line, and then have the oxyblaster be absorbed into it. Okay. Well, speaking of restaurants, right? Obviously. The most common thing you probably see in a restaurant is grease. Mm -hmm. Somebody comes in to you, Taff, I have a restaurant to clean. Mm -hmm. Carp is really old, it's full of grease and slush. Yeah. Then I'm guessing you will also recommend that trash high pH. Actually, yes, that's <coughs> um, correct. So the trash high pH uh, has a pH of 13.5. It's a lot of pH because 14 is the, is the top. So it's, it's alkaline, it's highly alkaline. You don't want to use it on clean stuff because then you're going to ruin the pH. But when you use it on dirty, built up uh, spots and stains and dirt, then what it actually does, it neutralizes that a lot faster because everything we eat and drink is on the acid side. So when we have build up, basically what you're doing is you're cleaning acid. In order to do that, if you use a high alkaline, it just does it faster. So it's not, you know, people want, want to say that it's, uh, what's the best product? It, there is no such thing. In this particular case, when you're cleaning buildup, uh, and the buildup is on the acid side, then the high pH, and, and generally buildup is on the acid side because everything we eat and drink is on the acid side. Um, kind of like our, our mouth too, you know, we, we have acid. So when we go brush our teeth, we use alkaline toothpaste because it neutralizes it right away. Otherwise, it would just take us forever to clean. Same thing with the floors. When there's buildup, use a high alkalinity pre-spray so it cuts it down right away and then also remember that it's also getting neutralized the pre-spray the 13.5 is getting neutralized by the acid too so therefore when you're cleaning clean things don't use the high ph because there's nothing on there to neutralize that yeah. okay so what about <coughs> sorry what about pet stains in a customer homes you know more than half of americans have pets in their homes yeah so what will you use in that case um, to get rid of pet stains? Yeah. So pet stains is, is pretty interesting because uh, when you're dealing with pets, there's two things that you have to consider. One is the stain. The other one is the smell. The smell. And the smell is probably a little bit more challenging than the mm -hmm. stain. Now, the magic wand chemistry, all our pre-sprays, all our detergents already have oxygen in it. So is pet stain organic you think yeah obviously it's yeah. natural right so any organic spot or stain needs uh, oxygen on it so if you have the magic wand chemistry you can uh, just remember that it's going to make those spots and stains disappear and if for example you need to work on a spot that maybe got a little better from the cleaning but it needs a little bit more oomph you could take your gel and uh, mix it with three parts of water so one part of this to three parts of water and just spray it on the spot and the concentration of the oxygen will just make it instantly disappear. Okay. Now, 
sometimes urine stains and stuff they could also have synthetic dyes in them because what what if the dog is eating dog food that has some kind of a dye so so if usually the yellow color is indicating that it's urine natural organic but you know if there's some other tints of other colors you gotta be a little cautious because you even after the oxygen's done its work there may be some color dye which which actually we need to use a different uh, okay. product but that's very very rare but it could happen okay so for for the smell part of it then for the smell part like how do you get rid of the smell because you yeah. can clean the carpet and get rid of the stain and you don't see it right a yeah. visual removal of, of the stain right. but what about the smell yeah that's harder to get um, out yeah that's great so i'm going to give you an article you can put in the description of your video um, it's how to do orders correctly and um, it's on our blog on our website but uh, basically what you have to do is you have to do a good <coughs> thorough investigation okay for example how big is your dog did the dog go on it once or did the dog continue going on it if it's a little chihuahua and you can <coughs> dribble here and there no big deal you could use something like um, stinky winky burst the enzymes take care of it but a lot of the times it's not just in the carpet it may have gone into the padding and that's what your investigation has to show how bad is it if it's gone into the padding then yes you have to address the padding regardless of how much you spray on the surface not going to do much so in that case we have a product called osr order and stain remover i think it's sitting here somewhere it's this one right here order and stain remover <coughs> Basically what this one does is uh, you mix it in an open bucket and you just spill it onto um, the carpet and it goes into the padding. And then you leave it alone for 30 minutes. It does its thing. Uh, basically what it's doing is mass producing the enzymes. And it also has oxygen in it, which will address the wicking, you know, the yellow staining that may be left behind. Um, but you leave it alone and then you come back in 30 minutes, you extract it as best as you can and then just you know let it dry uh, what it will do will, will take care of the padding itself now there's another step it's heavy restoration now what if say the subfloor underneath is destroyed the baseboards the walls what about the air circulating and going in every little crevice in the place right yeah. heating and ventilation system so in that particular case you may want to ozone it or use hydroxyl or something to address that but it's more you know rarely you do that but if you had to you have to educate <coughs> the customer that this is there is no really magic bullet you know I can try to get right. the best product but then we still have not addressed you know it may come it's out of the carpet might come out of the padding but what about the rest of the place and I think most likely before they call in a carpet cleaner they probably try cleaning it themselves yeah you know, they probably try to address the issue and then they clean it while the smell still there yeah so they just expect you to just come in and do some type of magic and yeah. gone, right? So, you know, let your, your customers know, hey, it could be deeper rooted, it could be something that is not a quick fix. Right. Um, then as a business owner, I'm sure when you were also cleaning carpets, um, one of the most frust frustrating things for you must have been like getting callbacks if you ever had any. <laughs> Hey, you cleaned my carpet last week. The smell is back. The stain is back. Yeah. What do you do for like reappearing stains and reappearing smells? Like, uh, let's address the stains by itself. Mm -hmm. So most of the time, <coughs> the stains will wake up. Waking up happens because someone pre-sprayed the carpet too much, and then the spot and stain went inside. And then they came with their wand and used the wand, and and to them it looked like it was gone, but later as the carpet starts drying it's called capillary action it's the process of drying as the water evaporates brings the residue okay. up to the surface so now all of a sudden that stains back and sometimes the customer will, will say oh that stain is back but now it's bigger because what happened is went in spread out and then as it wicked up it dried up like that so so that's one number two is it's really important to use uh, solvents that have some kind of volatile solvent added in it so it makes it evaporate for example i don't know if you have um, our our citra pure uh, citra pure that's is nine uh, that's the gel <coughs> the citra pure uh, additive the liquid is actually 95 percent pure citrus 
but the five percent in there is really what the magic is what that's doing is making it evaporate because it's a non-volatile dry solvent and basically if you use a non-volatile dry solvent without the volatility in it that means that the stain is going to be there um I'm sorry, the stain's gonna be gone, but the residue is gonna still be there. So now it's gonna create a new stain because people walk on it and whatever else happens to it. Um, so that's another reason that the stains come back. Okay. Uh, one more thing really quickly. On the wicking up, I said the pre-spray, you pre-spray, but also how to use the wand. And you probably noticed a lot of YouTube videos, people are just going crazy, zigzag cleaning with the wand and the trigger open. You know what? Gravity doesn't need that much time to work. It like starts instantly. Okay. So with improper wand technique, you're also making all that spot and stain go in deeper and then wake back up again later. Right, because then you you were just cleaning the surface of it. You, you're not really cleaning the bottom of it. Right. And that's why it wakes back up. Okay, so let's go just for one second into the floor side. Because mm -hmm. I know you have a lot of customers who do also wood floors and VCT and so yeah. um, professional floor finish is one of the items that you promote the most on your website um, <laughs> that customers also ask about the most can you use professional floor finish on all floors or is it limited to certain kinds of that's floors? a really good question so professional floor finish is the most unique product uh, made for natural surfaces so it's made for your uh, natural stones like limestone, sandstone, marble, anything like that. Yeah. And it's also made for wood floors. And the reason different chemistry is needed for natural surfaces is because they need to breathe. So it's not like your regular VCT wax that may actually seal the floor. It actually is a finish that let, let it breathe. Um, okay. It's microscopic. You can't really see it. So... Um, if you're just doing like regular VCT, then it's better to just get the VCT wax because you don't you don't really need that characteristic. Right, right. Um, but in ca in in the case where you're actually um, doing natural surfaces, if you use a regular floor wax, you're basically sealing it in and maybe causing uh, more damage. Yes, exactly. Right, right. Okay, and then lastly, um, I've seen a lot of comparisons online. I think a lot of mis you know misguided customers and copper cleans as well. Can you can you explain to me as well the the difference between like atomic and what is used for, and then how does it compare or does it compare to magic potion? Because oh. because is I feel like it's very confusing to some people. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, I guess it it would be kind of confusing to the new person, but. Uh, basically, Magic Potion is a detergent made for carpet cleaners to use in their stock solution. Okay. So in the detergent tank, you add that. Um, it's, it's, it's a very unique product. Uh, it has uh, mm -hmm. anti-resoilability, so it's going to keep the carpet cleaner longer. Okay. And it's probably one of the very few products that does not have STTP, sodium tripolyphosphate, which can be really bad for our environment. Uh, so Magic Potion is a safe product that helps you clean. And the reason you want to use that versus use, say, the trash green gel as a detergent or our Citra Pure as a detergent is because it has a little higher pH. So when you get into dirtier places, like, say, apartment, after your pre-spray gets picked up, you don't want to be cleaning with a 7 neutral pH when it's still dirty. Right. So if you have a little bit more oomph, which it, I, I don't know the exact pH, maybe a 10, um, it's going to help you uh, clean better, faster yeah. as well. Okay, and then the atomic part of it. That was magic yes, potion, the atomic part. Uh, yes, what is exactly. atomic? So the atomic is basically for encapsulation. Okay. So with encapsulation, it's kind of interesting. You have to do a good job vacuuming, and then you l use oscillating pad machines that, um, or Cymax, you know, things, machines that turn around like this but they're also going like this at the same time so they're cleaning all sides of the fiber plus they have pads and it gets transferred onto the pads the dirt so what about the residue that's left behind and that's what atomic excels at it takes that and it forms it into a ball microscopic you really don't see it and yeah. and and when they when the customer vacuums the next day 
the carpet actually becomes even cleaner. Okay, so it's like it's like a two step, um, like a two part version of, of the cleaning. So you do your, the carpet cleaner does the cleaning first, and it looks clean. It actually yeah, looks okay. like pretty new. But then you can also like recommend to your customer, hey, try vacuuming this tomorrow if you can, yeah. and it will make it last longer. It'll be a, a better clean. It'll actually yes, clean it better. Okay. Um, do you have anything else you want to add? I think that finishes up my questions. Do you have anything else that you would, you would like to add? Well, a lot of uh, just, just you know, when <coughs> buying chemicals, it's not just about how big the bottle is, but what's inside of it and how it's going to work and how it reduces your labor. Because the biggest cost that we have in our industry, it's not the cost of the chemicals, it's not the cost of the equipment. You know, it's really the cost of labor. And as you grow your business, it becomes even more important that you have concentrates that make you money instead of you just dumping that into something that is wasteful. Right, it's not. You have to think about how much you can make from that one gallon. Right. You know, that one makes you 64 gallons. So the price of it is not really the $40 right. that you're paying for. It's the 25 cents right. that you're making per gallon because you're going to have more <laughs> exactly. product to use. So um, just, just a little comment on that. Uh, I had a salesperson come last week. And uh, he, he was telling me that our bottle cost $40 and, and the bottle he sells, he's a salesperson, he was next door, and um, it cost $2.50. And I was like, whoa, that's really cheap, but how much does it make? Well, guess what, it's ready to use. Okay. So at $25, uh, $2.50 times 64, that's what, $180? So it's cost $180 or something that costs forty dollars. <coughs> so, in, in reality, then this would it would be more beneficial for you to just to buy one bottle of trash green gel, leave it in your truck, right. make more chemicals, make more ready to use product than having to go back to the store exactly. and buy multiple bottles and buy multiple things. Exactly. Yes. Well, did he understand that when he explained it to him? Yeah, he was uh, surprised. He was like, well, <laughs> right. why am I selling this kind of thing? It's like, well, you didn't know. Well, that's why you're here. Right. To clarify a lot of misconceptions, a lot of questions that, you know, for some reason, even they're out there in the, in the internet, in the world, people say misguided information. Um, customers have questions that they cannot find right. online because they're very specific, yeah. you know. Yes. To, to the industry. Exactly, you know? yeah. Um, only a carpet cleaner can help a carpet cleaner really to explain to them how to do that because right. you can read manuals and you can read labels mm. but real life hands-on experience is Doing a lot it, yeah. more valuable than a label mm -hmm. all right i think that pr that's pretty much it Taff. thank okay. you so much well thank um, you great questions we'll do maybe another one sometime soon if more questions come up leave a, co the, a comment down in the, in the video if you have any other questions because these are all coming from you guys so leave a comment, visit our website, uh, magicwandcompany.com. Um, we can call the number, speak to Taff directly if you have any other questions, or if you want to go deeper into um, any of the questions that we asked him today. Um, thank you, Taff. Yes, thank, thank you. you.